All right, what's going on? Let's take a look at this test one for practice test for the SAT. It's the calculator version. Uh, you can check. I got another video that has the no calculator version for test one, so check that out. So let's go ahead and get started. It says John runs at different speeds as part of his training program. The graph shows his target heart rate at different times during his workout on which on which interval is the target heart rate strictly increasing then strictly decreasing all right so what we're looking at increasing well that is that's where it's the graph is rising as you look at it from left to right it's rising and for decreasing it's falling from left to right so if you look at all these intervals you see this interval here from 40 to 60 see how it's strictly increasing and then it's strictly decreasing see none of the other ones do that see here it's just increasing and then it's constant decreasing here it's increasing and then constant it's flat here it's increasing and then it's constant and then it's decreasing so you can see it's 40 to 60 minutes B. All right, if Y equals K times X where K is a constant and Y equals 24 when X equals 6, what is the value of Y when X equals 5? All right, so, so we, have, uh, we have Y equals K times X. And the, they give us this information here that y is equal to 24 when x is equal to 6. So let's just plug that in. 24 is k times 6. And what we need to do is solve for uh, k in this equation. And so if we divide both sides by 6, we get k equals 4. And so now we can plug that back in. So y is equal to 4 times x. And now they want to know the value of y when x is 5. So y equals 4 times 5, which equals 20. And so that would be c. All right, let's look at number 3. It says in the figure above, lines L and M are parallel. So these two lines here are parallel. And lines S and T are parallel. So these two lines here are parallel. If the measure of angle 1 is 35 degrees, all right, so here's angle 1 right here, and we know that measure is 35 degrees, what is the measure of angle 2? So this is the angle we're looking for. Well, this one's pretty easy. Well, if this is 35, and see, that means this is 35 because these lines are parallel. And since these lines are parallel, this one's also 35 degrees and then this is just a straight line and we know that this entire angle here is 180 degrees so if we do 180 minus 35 that'll give us what's left over so uh, angle 2 is going to be 180 minus 35 degrees which that gives us 145, and so that would be D. All right, so what about this one? If 16 plus 4X is 10 more than 14, what is the value of 8X? All right, so first what we need to do is set up the equation. So it says that 16 plus 4x is 10 more than 14. Well, what's 10 more than 14? Well, 10 plus 14 is equal to 24. So this equals 24, and then we just solve. So we'll subtract 16 to both sides, and that gives us 4x equals 8, divide by 4, x equal 2. Now what do they want to know? They want to know the value of 8x. Make sure you read the problem carefully because what they're wanting you to do is pick this value here. They're trying to trick you. And so 8 times 2 is equal to 16 and so that would be C. 
All right, let's look at the next page. All right, which of the following graphs best shows a strong negative association between D and T? Well, when you're looking at a graph, remember, remember this, that if, if you have a graph that looks like this, that's a, that slope is positive. And if you have a graph that looks like this, that slope is negative. So we're looking for something that looks like this. Well, these are kind of going down. This one's not, so we know it's not this, and we know it's not this because that's positive. So it's between A and D. But which one looks stronger? Well, this looks more like a line than this up here does, and so the answer would be D. All right, so what about this one? Uh, six. It says, a hospital stores one type of medication in two decagram containers. Based on the information given in the box above, how many one milligram doses are there in one two decagram container? All right, so let's, let's write this down. We know that one decagram is equal to 10 grams okay that's we got that up here so that means two decagrams is equal to what in grams well that's two times 10 grams okay and so that is equal to 20 grams all right and then we have a thousand milligrams okay is equal to one gram all right so we have 20 grams so let's let's go ahead and write that over here 20 grams is equal to what? 20 times 1,000 milligrams. See, if I multiply this one by 20, I have to multiply this by 20 also. And so that would be 20,000 milligrams. And you see what I did? Hopefully you can see now why I went from decagrams to grams and then grams to milligrams because that's the information they gave me. Okay, I'm going from decagrams to gram and then grams to milligrams. All right, and so the answer here would be D. All right, so here we got seven. It says the number of rooftops with solar panel installations in five cities is shown in the graph above. If the total number of installations is 27,500, what is an appropriate label for the vertical axis of the graph? So we want to know what do we need to label this axis here? Well, it's obviously all number of installations. Well, it says the total number is 27,500. So, I mean, if we add all these up, we're not even near to being in the thousands. And, you know, same thing, we wouldn't want to add these up in the hundreds either or the or even the ten thousands because, I mean, you're looking if it was ten thousands, that would be ninety thousand right there. OK, so I'm, I'm saying it's going to be C in the thousands because this would be nine thousand, five thousand, six thousand and so on. So that would be the appropriate label because that's going to get us to that a lot better. All right. For what value of N is N minus one? plus one equal to zero. Well, you don't even have to do any solving here. That would be no, uh, D, there's no value, because think about it. For this to equal zero, this value right here would have to be negative one, because negative one plus one is zero. This will never be negative one, because you're taking the absolute value, and it's always positive. Okay. All right, so questions 9 through 10, 
refer to this. It says A equals 1052 plus 1 1.08 T. The speed of sound the speed of a sound wave in air depends on the air temperature. The formula above shows the relationship between A, the speed of a sound wave in feet per second, and T, the air temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. Which of the following expresses the air temperature in terms of the speed of a sound wave? Well, all that, all that means to do is take this function here and solve it for T. So if we subtract this 1052 to both sides, we get A minus 1052 equals 1 1.08 T. And then we divide both sides by 1.08. Well, in 1.08, those cancel. We're left with just T right here. So you can see that's A. All right, so let's look at number 10. It says, at which of the following air temperatures will the speed of a sound wave be closest to 1,000 feet per second? Okay, so, well, so that right there is the speed, 1,000 feet per second, and we know from up here a represents the speed, so they want to know the temperature T. They want to know this what this would be if we plug a thousand into here. Well, look at this. That's what's what's so nice about here. We already solved for T, so we just plug the one thousand into there, and so that's going to give us one thousand minus one thousand fifty-two over one point zero eight equals T, and that's going to give us. T equals negative 48.1 when you punch it in, so that would be B. Which of the following numbers is not a solution of the inequality? All right, so, well, all we do, we just got to solve this. So to solve this, we're going to, we'll subtract 3X to both sides. And we'll add 3 to both sides. And so we get x is less than or equal to negative 2. Now, what I like, so, so well, let's just look at it like this. Let's look at it on a, on a graph. Here's negative 2. And if we graph this, x is less than negative 2 or equal to. So that would be a shaded in circle. And so that would come back this way. So everything back this way is a solution everything from here to the right is not a solution and so that would be see negative one would be over here so it's not a solution all right so let's look at number 12 based on the histogram above of the following which is closest to the average arithmetic mean number of seeds per apple all right. So what we would do here, so see what what this is is in in three um, in three apples there's two seeds, five apples there's four, six apples there's one, four apples there's none, and so on. So we want to find the mean. So what this what this does is in three apples, there's two, there's, uh, there's seeds, there's two seeds per apple. Okay. Well, that, that's what we're trying to find. Uh, so to find this mean here, we would have to take the two times three. So let me come down here so I can have enough room. So that's going to be two times three plus, and then we've got four times zero, which that's just zero. And then we've got what? Four times five, four times five plus, and then one times six, one times six, and then two times seven. And then zero times eight is just zero. And then we've got three times nine. 
and if we add all that up that is going to give us 73 and so the mean okay the mean would be 73 over the total number of apples which is 12 and so that's going to be 6.08 and the closest one that's 6 all right, it says a group of 10th grade students responded to a survey that asked which math course they were currently enrolled in. The survey data were broken down as shown in the table above. Which of the following categories accounts for approximately 19% of all the survey respondents? Okay, so they, they want to know which uh, category, so it's Females taking geometry, females taking algebra two, or males geometry, males algebra one. Well, we need to figure out which number is what? 19% of the total of the, of the 310 here. So if we take 310 times the 19% times 0.9, we convert it to a decimal, that's equal to 58.9. And so, well, which one is the closest well let's look and see what what choices we have females taking geometry so that's we've got that one females taking algebra 2 and then we've got uh, males taking geometry and then we've got uh, males taking algebra 1 so of these okay which one's closest to the 58.9? Well, that's this one, and so that would be C, males taking geometry. All right, lengths of, lengths of fish. It says the table above lists the lengths to the nearest inch of a random sample of 21 brown bullhead fish. The outlier measurement of 24 inches is in error. So that's this outlier here. That means it doesn't really fit with the rest of the data. Of the mean, median, and range of the values listed, which will change the most if the 24 inch measurement is removed from the data? Well, I mean, if you take that 24 out, I mean, you got 21 samples here. If you find the mean, that's, I mean, that's not going to change it a whole lot uh, but but look at this and and I don't believe it's going to be the median either because I mean your numbers that are in the middle are right around in here and you can see they're kind of all the same but look at this the range that's the largest value minus the smallest well if you do 24 minus 8 that's equal to what 16 but if you delete this value and do this value minus this value 16 minus 8 that changes quite a bit that changes by 8 inches and so it's going to be C all right it says the, gra the graph above displays the total cost C in dollars of renting a boat for H hours all right, so we're going to use this to answer 15 to answer numbers 15 and 16. So let's see what we've got here. What does the C intercept represent in the graph? Uh, okay, so the uh, the intercept that's where it crosses this axis here. Well, you can see that. See T. Whatever, whatever function this is, that would be in terms of, uh, well, actually in terms of uh, H in this case. Well, no, the total cost. The C-axis is the total cost. But H hours, when H is zero, that's the initial time. So that would be the initial cost. And so that's the initial cost. That's this value right here. 16, there it is. Which of the following represents the relationship between H and C? Well, 
if you if you look at this you can see it, this one this would be pretty easy to do um it's going to be one of these you could find you could find the equation of the line it would it would be in the form y equals mx plus b remember that but see in this case y is that's our c axis is equal to the slope and x normally that's this axis that would be h and then plus the intercept there so it would be in this form here okay so we know we can we can cross that one out so it's going to be one of these so if you look at this, well, notice all the slopes are different. So let's just find the slope. So to find the slope here, we have to go up one, two, three units, okay, to get here. Because remember, slope is equal to rise over run. And so we went up three units, and then here we go over to the to this point for the run now once again i think they're trying to trick you again from here to here is one unit okay and what they're doing is they're trying to trick you into counting these little boxes here so you know make sure you pay attention so the run is just one and so there's your slope of three and so it would be c all right, so let's look at this. The complete graph of the function f is shown in the xy plane above. For what value of x is the value of f of x at its minimum? All right, so let's see. Well, it looks like the, okay, so here is the, axis let's see here it is kind of made they should have dotted some of these lines but there's your axis so where is the minimum value it's right there and they want to know for what x value so if we go over one two negative three units so that would be b all right so 18 it says in the xy plane if 0 0 is a solution to the system of inequalities above which of the following relationships between a and b must be true all right so let's go ahead and let's just take this uh let's come down here and do it we've got y is less than negative x plus a which that means that zero is less than negative zero plus a which that means zero is less than a see all i did was just plug this solution in and then we have y is greater than x plus b which that means if i plug the zero in for y and x that means zero is greater than x i'm sorry is greater than zero plus b which that means zero is greater than B. So what this, what this is telling us is it's telling us we know that A is positive and B is negative. Because see, B is less than zero, A is greater than zero. And so, well, that would be this one. If A is positive, it has to be larger than B. All right. So let's look at this one. It says a food truck sells salads for $6.50 each and drinks for $2 each. The food truck's revenue from selling a total of 209 salads and drinks in one day was $836.50. How many salads were sold that day? All right, so for this one, we can actually just... Uh, just set up a system of equations so let's we're going to let x equal the number of salads and we're going to let y equal the number of drinks okay so it says a food truck sells salads for 650 each and drinks 
for $2 each. The food truck's revenue from selling a total of 209 salads and drinks in one day. So in one day, it sold 209 drinks and salads. So that means X plus Y equals 209. It says its, its revenue was $836.50. So the amount of money we made on salads plus the amount of money we made on drinks has to equal $836.50. Well, if the salads are $650 each, then that's going to be 6.5 times times x. I know it's 6.50, but let's just write 6.5. It's the same thing, and won't, we won't have as many numbers. And then plus the amount we sold in drinks, they're $2 each. So that's going to be 2 times y, and that's going to equal the total amount, 836.50. And then we just have a system of equations to solve. So, I mean, you get to use a calculator. So what we'll need to do here is we'll need to multiply this by negative two and we can get rid of the, of the Y values. And so what that's going to do, if I multiply this equation by negative two, that's negative two X minus two Y equals negative 418. And then I've got the 6.5 X plus two Y equals 836.5 and if I add those I get 4.5 X is equal to 418.5 and then if I divide both sides by 4.5 I get X equals 93 and what they want to know how many salads were sold that day? Well, X is the number of salads we saw for X is 93, so that's B. All right, so number 20 says, Alma bought a laptop computer at a store that gave a 20% discount off its original price. The total amount she paid to the cashier was P dollars, including an 8% sales tax on the discounted price. Which of the following represents the original price of the computer in terms of P? All right, so let's take a look at this. All right, so we want the original price in terms of P. All right, P is what she paid with the after the discount and everything so let's let's come up here and let's just start off by saying that x is the original price okay and so well now we need the discounted price so what would be the discounted price well the discounted price is equal to what? The original price minus what? Minus the discount. Well, it's 20% off the original price. So we need 20% of the original price. So that's 0.2 times the original price, 0.2x, which that is equal to 0.8x. And then we need the sales tax So the sales tax, that was, that was added, that was based on the discounted price, the sales tax was, and it was 8%. So we need 8% of the discounted price. So that's 0 0.08 times 0.8x. All right. So, well, let's go ahead and see what we've got here. So the, the price that was paid, okay, the price that was paid, which is P, that is equal to the 0.8X, that's the discounted price, plus the sales tax, which is 0 0.08 times 0.8X. All right, and the one of the reasons I didn't multiply this out is looking at the answers here, 
if we did if we did 0 0.08 0 0.08 times 0 0.8 that gives me 0 0.0064 and I don't see that anywhere so I'm so that leads me to think that when they solved this they didn't multiply this out okay and so this gives me p is equal to now if I factor out a 0.8x that's 0.8x times 1 plus 0 0.08 which that's going to give me P equals uh, 1.08 times 0.8 times X. All right, and now we, they want us to solve for X, okay, because they want the original price in terms of P. And so I would divide both sides by 1.08 times 0 0.8, 1.08 times 0 0.8. See, that knocks all that out, and I'm left with it this which this would give me what d as an answer okay all right so let's look at the next one dreams recalled during one week it says the data in the table above were produced by a sleep researcher studying the number of dreams people recall when asked to record their dreams for one week Group X consists of 100 people who observed early bedtimes, and group Y consisted of 100 people who observed later bedtimes. If a person is chosen at random from those who recalled at least one dream, what is the probability that the person belonged to group Y? All right, so let's, let's look at this. All right, so remember, probability is the number of successful outcomes over the number of possible outcomes. So the probability here, well, we've got to be kind of careful when we're reading this. Um, it says, if a person is chosen at random from those who recalled at least one dream. So what that's telling us is that we're looking only at this. That's all we're looking at is this, at least one. See, we're not considering these because these didn't recall any. And then it wants to know what is the probability that the person belongs to group Y. Okay, so, well, that means that's going to take out this group X. So all we're concerned about is this. So the probability is the number of successful outcomes, which is the 11 plus 68 over the possible, which is the 39 plus 125. And then when you punch, when you do that, that's 79 over 164. And so that's C. All right, so this right here is the this table here is what we're going to use to answer questions 22 to 23 this is annual budgets for different programs in kansas 2007 to 17 it says the table above lists the annual budget in thousands of dollars so this is in thousands of dollars for each of six different state programs in kansas from 2007 to 2010. All right, so 22, which of the following best approximates the average rate of change in the, in the annual budget for agricultural natural resources in Kansas from 2008 to 2010? All right, so agricultural natural resources, well, that means we're on this line right here, and they want to know from what 2008 to 2010 so that means we're interested in this in this right here and this value right here okay well the average rate of change you know the average rate of change that's just the slope so this this right this number here is your y value 
and the 2008 and 2010, that would be your X value. So remember, it's just Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. And so let's see, to do that, that is going to be 4881060000 because it's in thousands minus 3587080000. Over the 2010 minus 2008, and that actually gives us 64699000. And so the closest one there that is B. Okay, all right, so let's look at the erase this because we might need this space to work the next one so we can look at the table let's erase all this stuff here it says of the following which programs ratio of its 2007 budget to its 2010 budget is closest to the human resources programs ratio of its 2007 budget to its 2010 budget all right, so the first thing we need to do, let's let's just go ahead and highlight the human resources. We're going to be using that. And they're they're interested in the 2007 to 2010. So let's find that ratio, okay? And they want to know uh, 2007 to 2010, so that means the 2007 is going to go on top. So for that, for the human resources, that ratio is going to be 4051050 over 5921379. Okay, and that is equal to 0.68. Now you might be wondering or asking, well, why didn't you add the three zeros here well we don't need to because we're dividing them okay see if i added the three zeros here and the three zeros here they would just you could cancel them so i don't so i don't need to worry about adding them so it says of the following which program's ratio of its 2007 to 2010 budget is closest to the human resources so what you what you have to do here and this you know this kind of sucks here but you've got to take this column in this column, you've got to take each one of those and you got to do this divided by this, this, and then this divided by this, and then this divided by this, and so on, all the way down until you find one that comes close to the 0.68. Okay, that's, that's all I know to tell you. So I'm not going to go through and do all those, but let's see, the one that, the one that works is b the education it so you would take the two one six four six zero seven over the three zero zero eight zero three six and when you do that that's point seven one nine and that's the closest one okay and you can do this one just do this divided by this and then this divided by this and write each of those answers down you have a calculator and see which one comes closest to that but in this case it's b okay all right which of the following is an equation of a circle in the xy plane with center zero four and a radius with endpoint four thirds five. All right, so well we know the equation of a circle is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. Okay, and you know really what it boils down to is these all look similar here. We need to find the radius. Well, the equation of this circle would actually be, if we plug 0 in for h, that would be x squared plus, and then we've got y minus k, so y minus 4, y minus 4 squared, okay, equals, and then r squared. So we know it's not this one, and it's not this one, so it's one of these two. So we need to figure out r squared. Well, if you remember the... Uh, 
the distance formula, remember that's r equals the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. But look, I mean, this value here is r squared. So that means r squared is equal to that without without the square root all right so let's just take this to be uh, uh, x1 y1 and this one to be x2 y2 and let's plug them in and so so we get uh, what is that four thirds minus zero squared plus and then for the y that's four minus five squared well i'm sorry i mean it doesn't really matter five minus four squared so that's going to be what four thirds squared plus one squared and so that's going to be what 16 over nine if i square that plus one and so that's 16 over nine plus nine over nine which is 25 over nine and so it's it's not that one because that's not r squared so it's a the equation above expresses the approximate height h in meters of a ball t seconds after it is launched vertically upward from the ground with an, in, with an initial velocity of 25 meters per second. After approximately how many seconds will the ball hit the ground? Okay, so, well, I mean, that's, that's an easy one. All right, I don't know if you heard that. Yes, I have a weather radio and it went off, so I paused the video and let it finish telling us everything. Got a tornado warning. All right, so so what we're looking for here is... Let me get, okay, so what we're looking for is how many seconds will it take for the ball to hit the ground? Well, this right here, this H, represents the height, so we would just take the negative 4.9T squared plus 25T and we want to know when is the height zero. So here we factor out a t, negative 4.9t plus 25 equals zero, and so we get t equals zero, or negative 4.9t plus 25 equals zero. Subtract 25 to both sides. Divide both sides by negative 4.9, and that actually gives us t is, 5.1 and so that would be d we know it's not zero that's when it that's right before you throw it all right so let's look at 26 it says katarina is a botanist studying the production of pears by two types of pear trees she noticed that type a tree trees produce 20 percent more pears than type b trees did based on katarina's observation if the type a a trees produced 144 pairs. How many pairs did the type B trees produce? All right, so so we've got to let X equal type B, and so we have what X plus 0.2 X. Okay. So type A trees produce 20% more trees than type B. Based on Katarina's observation, if type A trees produced 144, how many did type B produce? So that, uh, that is equal to 1.2x. So we need to find out when is 1.2x equal to 144. Divide everything by 1.2. And so X gives us 120, and that would be B. Okay. You can't just take 20% of the 144. Okay. Don't, so don't do that. All right. So a square field measures 10 meters by 10 meters. 10 students each mark off a randomly selected region of the field. Each region is square and has side lengths of one meter, and no two regions overlap. 
The students count the earthworms contained in the soil to a depth of 5 centimeters beneath the ground surface in each region. The, ro the results are shown in the table below. Which of the following is a reasonable approximation of the number of earthworms to a depth of 5 centimeters beneath the ground surface in the entire field? Okay. All right. So let's let's look and see what we've got. All right. So I, I think what we do here is we just kind of maybe look at the smallest and largest value. So let's look at the smallest and there's the largest. So for the for the smaller regions, for the smaller regions, the count is 107 to 176. Okay. Now remember, this only counts for one one hundred. Okay, because that's what a smaller region is, because it's a it's a ten by ten meters. Okay, so it's only one. So remember, the smaller ones one by one, but the bigger ones ten by ten. So ten times ten is a hundred, and the smaller ones one times one, which is one. So we would need to take this and this. And times 100. So that means it's 10700, 100 times this, minus 176, and then add the two zeros. So the count for the whole entire field would be something about, you know, somewhere between 10 and 17,000. So the only one that does that is the 15,000. Okay. All right. So if the system of inequalities, y greater than or equal to 2x plus 1 and y greater than 1 half x minus 1 is graphed in the xy plane above, which quadrant contains no solutions to the system? All right, so, well, let's look at the graph here. Uh, well, let's see if we can kind of squeeze it onto here. Let's do 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. All right, so let's just go ahead and graph this. Y equals 2x plus 1. We graph the equation. So we've got a y-intercept of 1 and slope of 2. So that means we go up 2 and over 1. So that line is going to look like this. And then let's graph y equals 1 half x minus 1. So we've got a y-intercept of minus 1, a slope of 1 half. So we go up 1 and over 2. And so that graph is going to look something like this. Now, well, I'm sorry. It's going to be a dashed line. And let's do it in a different color. All right, so what we have to do is we've got to shade. So we've got y is greater than or equal to 2x. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a test point of 0, 0. We're going to plug 0, 0 into this. So 0 in for y, 0 in for x. So I get 0 is greater than, e greater than or equal to 2 times 0 uh, plus 1. So z is, I mean 0 is greater than or equal to 1. And so I chose the point over here. See, 0, 0 is down here. And when I plugged it in, that gave me a false statement. So that means I have to shade this part in. And I'm just going to shade it with straight lines. I'm not going to shade it in solid. And then I'm going to use the same point, 0, 0, to test this. So I get 0 greater than 1 half times 0 minus 1. So 0 is greater than negative 1. That's a true statement. The point I chose is over here, so that's the side I'm going to shade. And your solution is wherever the lines intersect. Well, you can see that the lines intersect. Let's see. Right all in here is where they intersect. So you can see there's a solution in every quadrant, first quadrant, second quadrant, third quadrant. The only one is the fourth quadrant. And so that answer would be C. All right. 
For a polynomial p of x, the value of p of 3 is negative 2. Which of the following must be true about px? Uh, let's see. All right, so, well, now if that was p of 0 equals that, then we could say it has a possibility of being a factor, but that's not the case, so none of those are it. Basically what it means, if you plug 3 in, and you use the if you use the three and you do the synthetic division, you have uh, a remainder of negative two, and so that would be D. All right, let's look at this one. Which of the following is an equivalent form of the equation of the graph shown in the xy plane above, from which the coordinates of vertex A can be identified as constants in the equation? Okay, so for number 30, well, let's see. Well, let's, let's, uh, let me think about this. What of the following is an equivalent form of the equation of the graph shown in this? Okay, so, well, what I would do is maybe let's convert it to, to the vertex form. Okay. Well, actually, we don't need to do that, do we? And we can see that the vertex is 1, and then, I mean, it's it may be kind of hard to see, but you can see that right there is not exactly at negative 15. It's at negative 16. So my vertex is 1, negative 16. Well, that would be the vertex to this, so it's going to be D. So that one wasn't bad. All right, so th this page right here, your the rest of the test is not multiple choice. You have to come fill your answers out in these bubbles here. I'm not going to go over how to do that. I'm just going to work the problems and give you the answers. Okay, so let's look at 31. It says, Wyatt can husk at least 12 dozen ears of corn per hour and at most 18 dozen ears of corn per hour. Based on this information, what is the possible amount of time in hours that it could take white to husk 72 dozen ears of corn? Well, that's just the 72 divided by the 12 per hour and then the 72 divided by the 18 per hour. So that's just going to be 72 over 12. That equals 6 hours. And then the 72 over 18, that equals 4 hours. And so our solution would be 4 to 6. All right, the posted weight limit for a covered wooden bridge in Pennsylvania is 6,000 pounds. A delivery truck that is carrying X identical boxes, each weighing 14 pounds, will pass over the bridge. If the, combine, if the combined weight of the empty delivery truck and its driver is 4,500 pounds, what is the maximum possible value for X that will keep the combined weight of the truck, driver, and boxes below the bridge's posted weight limit? All right, well, let's just figure out all of this. So uh, the boxes, they're 14 pounds each. And how many do we have? We've got X identical. So the 14X plus and then we have the weight the 4500 pounds of the empty delivery truck and the driver so that's 4500 that's the empty truck and the driver and then this is adding the weight of the boxes and we want to know when does that equal 6000 so because uh it says that will combine and the, so the maximum number possible boxes we can put on the truck so we just solve this so i've got 14 x subtract 4500 to both sides that's 1500 divide by 14 that's that's equal to 107.1 so we can have no more than 107 all right number of portable media players sold worldwide each year from 2006 to 2011 uh, according to the line graph above, the number of portable media players sold in 2008 is what fraction of the number of the number sold in 2011? Well, there's 2008, there's 2011, so that's just going to be a hundred over 
see in 2008 it was 100 so it's the 100 over the what sold in 2011 which is 160 okay and so that would be five eighths so as a local television station sells time slots for programs in 30 minute intervals uh, if the station operates 24 hours per day every day of the week what is the total number of 30 minute time slots the station can sell for tuesday and wednesday well they're uh they're half hour slots and the station operates 24 hours a day so for tuesday and wednesday well there's a total of 48 hours and we're doing half hour slots so that's 30 minutes or a half hour one fifth or 0.5 or 48 over 0.5 which that's equal to what 96 slots obviously they're not going to have that many but that's how many they could have all right we're on the last page so if you powered through it this long good for you all right so a dairy farmer uses a storage silo that is in the shape of the right circular <laughs> cell all right dog barked i don't know if you heard it but anyway let's start this problem again it says a dairy farmer uses a storage silo that is in the shape of the right circular circular cylinder above if the volume of the silo is 72 pi cubic yards what is the diameter of the base of the cylinder in yards all right well we just need the uh we need the formula for the volume so the volume is pi r squared times h so let's just plug everything in the volume is 72 pi so 72 pi equals pi and let's see we know the heights eight so that's r squared times eight so solve this we'll divide everything by eight pi that's going to leave us with r squared equals nine and so r is equal to plus or minus three when you solve remember square root property but we're talking about a radius so we know it's not going to be the negative it's going to be the positive and what is it let's see what did it want to know so a dairy farm uses a storage silo that is in the the volume of the thing what is the diameter okay notice they underlined it there they're trying to trick you again i think well the radius is three so from here to here is three well remember the diameter is equal to two times the radius and so that's six and that would be yards all right so this one for what value of x is the function h above undefined okay well what we can do there is we can solve this let's let's do a uh u substitution here this x minus 5 and x minus 5 we can replace those with u and so u squared plus 4u plus 4 we just set that equal to 0 and solve because that's when it's undefined when the denominator is 0 so if we factor this that's x plus 2 x plus 2 they're the same so we just take one of them set it equal to 0 x equal negative 2 well I'm sorry I don't know why I'm sitting there putting x it should be u in terms of u u plus u okay well that's what u needs to be but what is u well u is x minus 5 so x minus 5 equals negative 2 add 5 to both sides i get x equal 3. all right we've got two more problems and we're done so let's see it says Jessica opened a bank, a bank account that earns 2% interest compounded annually. Her initial deposit was $100, and she uses the, uses the expression 100x to the t to find the value of the account after t years. All right, so, well, let's see what we've got. So she deposits a hundred dollars okay so so let's see 
if we take 100, okay, and we do plus 0.02%, it's compounded annually, of the $100, that gives us, well, let's, let's do it like this. That gives us 100 times 1.02 because we want to kind of make it look like this and well let me write another step in there so you can see what's going on factor out the hundred that's one plus point zero two and so that's a hundred times one point zero two okay now think about it if i if it goes another year okay another year well that would be what 100 times now remember to get that we're, we're to get our interest it's 100 times this so times the point 1.02 that's for one year and then if we do another year that would be this and that's equal to 100 times 1.02 squared right so if you keep going on and on doing a third year you're going to have another 1.02 and so on. So what they're wanting to know is what is this X value here? Well, what's X? X is 1.02, and that's your answer. All right, so for 38, it says, Jessica's friend Tashawn found an account that earns 2.5% interest compounded annually. Tashawn made an initial deposit of $100 in this account, at the same time, Jessica made a deposit of $100 into her account. After 10 years, how much more money will Tashawn's initial deposit have earned than Jessica's initial deposit? And round your answer to the nearest cent and ignore the dollar sign when greeting your response. All right. So what I want you to see here is, okay, so for Jessica, her her equation that's going to be a hundred times 1.02 okay so that that was at the that was at two percent okay so let's make a note of that that's at two percent that's jessica's and to sean's is 2.5 percent okay this is going to come in we'll look at this in a minute all right so for how many years well it's for what uh where is it 10 years here okay so that's that's t see we figured out X is 1.0 is 1.02, and here T is 10, so we plug the 10 in, and when you put that into your calculator, you get 121.899. And now for Tashawn, that's going to be 100 times. Well, what do you think X is going to be? Remember, 2% is 0 0.02 in decimals. What's 2.5% in decimals? 0 0.025 so this is going to be 1.025 and that's to the tenth and so that's going to be 128.008 and they want to know the difference so 128.008 minus 121.899 and that leaves us with six dollars and eleven cents and you don't have i mean it's dollars but remember you don't have to worry about gridding that in when you're uh, filling in the answer. So long video. Uh, glad if you stayed the whole time. Uh, sorry about some of the interruptions we had, but hopefully it helped. Check out my other videos. Give me a like, share, and subscribe.